Aloha and namaste. I'm Renee. Welcome to some peace, love, abundance yoga with me. And today we're going to focus a little bit on trying to get some relief from symptoms of sciatica. Now, one thing about sciatica is if you truly have it, um, my heart goes out to you because the fact that it is more of a pain in the nerves and the way it shoots down the leg can be very uncomfortable and my heart goes out to you. But hopefully we can get a little bit of relief from that. One reason why um, possibly you have the sciatica or the pressure on the nerve is because your hips, lower back, uh, maybe even hamstrings and legs and hip flexors are a little bit too tight. So maybe if we can work into that area, find a little more range of motion in your lower body, then maybe we can relieve some of the pressure. Is it a cure? No, but let's see if we can relieve some of the symptoms. Along with having sciatica, sometimes people have what's called a tight piriformis. The piriformis is a muscle that connects right into your sits bone, right there, right on the sits bone. So if you have any pain or tightness in there, it's probably contributing to some of the tightness and pressure on the sciatic nerve. So that's gonna be kind of our focal point is right there on your sits bone today, getting a little bit of relief. Also, I mentioned finding the full range of motion of your hips. So we need to work on opening the hips, like me even just seated, sit, uh, sitting here, my, my hips are open, my legs are opening, so therefore I'm opening up the hip flexors, I am abducting. So we also need to find some adducting to where the legs rotating inward so that we're getting that full rotation and range of motion through the hip joint. So that will be our focus today. And all you need is, I happen to have a strap, but if you don't have a yoga strap, get a towel, a towel that's fairly long, that if you want to use a towel to wrap around your foot, you can. So you don't have to have a strap. If you have a belt, you could even use a belt or something similar to that. Also, a blanket can be very helpful if you have one. Uh, these, these Mexican blankets are are very common in yoga studios because of the thickness of them. And when you sit on them, they don't compress. Some of those newer fuzzy blankets that are out there these days that are great for watching TV or when you need an extra layer in bed. But once you fold them and you sit on them, they compress all the way down. So whatever blanket you use, you want it to have some density to it so that it actually lifts you up and supports you in the poses that we're going to use this in. We are also going to figure out how to find some gentle back bending. Nothing major. However, if you do know you can tolerate a little bit more in a back bend, I encourage you to maybe use an even thicker blanket, but know that you don't have to get super thick for this. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get into the, the sciatic nerves just a little bit here. To start out, I want you to go ahead and from a seated position, as best as you can, find some easy seated cross legs. Now, this is where a blanket could come in handy. If I fold this over several times, I can, I'm gonna sit on it. What we're looking for here is you want your knees to try and be lower than your hips, um, or at least in line. When I'm seated on the floor with nothing under my, my bum, my hips and my knees are uh, pretty level with each other. In other words, my knees aren't well above my hips, right? So when you sit down, if your knees tend to be well above your hips or you start to round through your backside and this is your posture when you're seated, then that's when you're gonna want to sit on a blanket or a block if you happen to have yoga supplies around the house, sit on a block. So a blanket, if I fold it up several times, it gets fairly thick. And then when I put it just under the sits bones, notice how it lifts my pelvic floor and my hips to where I'm definitely well above my knees. 
I'm a little bit more flexible than some. So your knees might still be up here, but hopefully maybe we're starting to get a little bit closer to the hips and the knees uh, being more on the same plane. Your knees might still be higher, but probably not as high as when you were down here, right? The hip to knee ratio. So really important, if you can sit on a folded blanket and get the hips and the pelvic floor uh, maybe in line with the knees or maybe even possibly higher than the knees. So then once you're there, lean forward. Now all of this is a test to see where you're at in your hips. Again, you don't need to use a blanket or a block at all if when you were seated like me, your, your hips and your knees were in the same plane or the knees were able to open up. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's clear. That the reason I'm seated on a blanket right now is to help you understand the relationship of your knees to your hips. So hopefully, if you were somebody who was like this before, being seated on something is helping get more lift in the knees relaxing down. Okay, so that was just kind of what I call like the pelvic floor to knee ratio test to see where you need to be. If you need the blanket now, you'll more than likely need it for a couple of the other postures as well. So keep the blanket under there if needed. If you don't need it, just keep your sits bones on the floor. All right, now from here, as best as you can, you're gonna start to bring your feet out in front of you. So now that we've figured out whether the hips should be elevated or not, I'm going to have you Take your legs out long in front of you. And for a variation of figure four, I want you to take your, your right ankle to here. If you're really good with rights and lefts, you're probably looking at me right now saying that that's her left leg. Bingo, you're right. But my goal is to mirror you, okay? So if you're not a pro at rights and lefts, then do the same leg that I'm doing. So just like we're mirroring each other. All right, so your right ankle right behind your left kneecap. Now, if you're super tight and this knee is way up here, you might need to stay here, but just gently encourage a little bit of opening here. If this makes you scrunch your face and be in major pain, obviously don't put any more pressure. But if you can put a little pressure and feel that hip open, then go for it. Stay here if this seems like the best stretch for you. If you can take this further, then you're going to bend this knee and bring your foot flat to the floor. Then take your fingertips behind you so you can sit up tall. Because if bending all of this made you round in like this, then I want you to lift your heart and your chin off your chest. Now, once you're here in a seated forward fold, as best as you can be, maybe your knee's only bent a little bit, maybe it's bent a lot like mine, now, take a little bit of a, a sway here. Gently sway side to side. Now, if you find a spot where right down here on your sits bone, you're getting a really, really deep, deep stretch, you can feel that right on your sits bone. And when you find it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because you'll feel it exactly right there on the point of your sits bone. So when you find that sweet spot, hold it and breathe. Keep this foot flexed to where the toes are pulling back up towards your kneecap, but hold that and breathe. I know it's intense, but if you found what I call your sweet spot, now you might be thinking, Renee, that's not very sweet, <laughs> but it's where you need the stretch the most. The, the piriformis that I talked about earlier, it's a muscle that wraps around your sits bone and that should be what you're feeling right now is the piriformis. Now, if you feel this pain in the sits bone all the time and it's not shooting down your leg, there's a good chance that your piriformis is what um, needs to be opened up and you don't have sciatica. That would be really good news if it actually is your piriformis and not sciatica. Because sciatica is, is no fun at all. Neither is a tight piriformis. Sometimes they can be confused with each other. Sometimes we have both the sciatica and the tightness in the piriforma. So I want you to just hold here and breathe. You can do this. And you're still holding that sweet spot or maybe a little bit of shift in the other direction. 
If it takes you out of the sweet spot, then I encourage you to come back into it. But as you move gently side to side, you'll find where you need to have this stretch the most. Your body will speak to you and be like, yep, that's the sweet spot. Hold there and breathe. Now, breathing is very important. So let's breathe a little bit deeper. So five deep breaths. Breathe in. And out. Again, breathe in. And out. We have three more. Yes, and these are nice, deep, intense breaths. They're not going to be relaxing breaths. I want you to go ahead and take these deep breaths. By now, probably two more. Breathe in. And out. One more. One more. You can do this. Deepest breath yet. Breathe in. Inhale. And then a nice big exhale. All right. Now let's gently reverse how we got here. So first of all, you'll go ahead and let your left leg lengthen back out. We're just reversing how we got here. And then go ahead and take the right leg off. Whew. Maybe a little bit of movement here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either leg. Work it out a little bit. All right. Now, where there's a right side, there's a left side. Yes. So get ready. Psych yourself up. Repeat after me. Say, I love my second side. <laughs> Even though you know what's coming, don't be scared. This side could possibly be, be easier or maybe it's your tighter, sore side. Either way, we need to balance out by doing both sides. All right, keeping your right leg long now, take your left ankle up right behind your kneecap. Now holding here. Again, encourage this leg to go down. If you're way up here and you're pretty tight, you're already getting an amazing stretch. Amazing is always a relative term there. But anyways, if you're already getting a lot of stretch, you might need to stay here. If you can encourage your knee to go down a little bit, go for it. But if it makes you scrunch and scream, you're trying too hard. Back off a little bit. All you need to do is feel a stretch through the outer hip and maybe through the glutes. All right. Now, if you want to take this further like we did the other leg, then go ahead and bend your right knee. Fingertips behind you. Remember, take your hands behind you so you can sit up tall. And once you're seated up tall, flex this foot so your big toe is pulling back towards your kneecap. That protects your knees. If you want to have healthy knees, then you need to flex your foot. Or if you ever have pain in your knee when you do poses like this, it's because you're not flexing your foot. Resist pointing in this pose. When you point the toes, it's, it creates a little stress on the knee. So keep your foot flexed. Sit up tall, lift your chest. Find that gentle little rock and sway here. And then when you find that sweet spot where you get the best stretch out of your piriformis right there on your sits bones, you'll feel it when you find it because it's right there on your sits bone. Again, it's, it's like a little rubber band that's wrapped around your sits bone. It's not a huge muscle whenever you compare it to say the psoas muscle or the quads and such. It's not a very big muscle, but it can cause a lot of stress and pain and tension, right? So holding your sweet spot, breathe. If every now and then you want to take that little rock or sway side to side to where you find maybe a different sweet spot, maybe you have multiple uh, tightness going on and you need to find more than one sweet spot. This is probably also stretching through your IT band. I didn't mention it on the other side, but a lot of us have a tight IT band. The other side, I mentioned how a tight piriformis can sometimes be confused with uh, symptoms of sciatica. And that would be good news, actually. If you just need to stretch your muscles and you actually don't have true sciatica, that would be good news. Again, sometimes it can be both tight muscles and the nerve pain. So if you can relieve sometimes the symptoms of the tight muscles, then maybe the sciatica won't feel as intense because then you won't have both of them bothering you. Or by opening up the hips a little bit, creating more space in there, you'll have less pressure on the sciatic nerve. Either way, you're not making things worse right now. I promise. This is where you need to be right now and you need to work through this. 
Now, if you've had full-on hip replacement, surgery, or an injury, then you might want to consult your doctor before doing these stretches. But if it's just pure, intense stretch going on right now, breathe. Deepen your breath. We're at probably about doing our five more breaths. So five more deep breaths together. You can do this. Take a deep breath in. And let it out. Again, take your deep breath. Let it out. You have three more. Keep finding these nice deep breaths. Oxygen is part of the key to healing your body. By now, we have two more breaths. You can do anything for two more breaths. One more. Breathe in. Make it the deepest yet. A little celebration. Yay, you made it. All right, now carefully letting your legs come down, reversing how we got here. You can even use your hands. Use your hands to help release this leg. Whew. A little bit of movement or whatever you need here. The knees can bounce a little. Yeah, good work. All right, now let's take this onto our backside. We're still going to use a blanket, or if you didn't use a blanket for the seated version, go ahead and find one for this next version. Again, if you have a sensitive lower back, you might want to do a lower height of the blanket. But I actually think today that you, maybe you can handle some thickness. So what we're going to do is you're going to lay down with both feet flat to the mat. Lay down. And then once you're down, press down into your feet to lift your hips and slide your folded blanket underneath to where it is keeping your hips elevated and you're getting a slight back bend here. All right, now we're going to also incorporate our strap, belt, or uh, towel. Let your left, or rather take your right foot towards the ceiling, wrap your towel belt or strap around the right foot, and hold that hamstring stretch. Your leg does not need to be straight. If you're feeling it through the hamstring, you're good. You're good to go. Don't worry about whether your leg goes straight or not. Left leg, if you can, let it go long onto the floor so it appears that you are doing kind of the splits here or an L. The legs look like an L. With the blanket underneath, you're getting a slight back bend. If that is irritating your sciatica or making things worse, then I want you to reverse how we got here, pull the blanket all the way out, and then you can do this stretch without having a back bend, okay? Or the other thing you can try is maybe don't do the blanket quite as thick. So maybe less thickness with the blanket, and then come into your hamstring stretch. See if you can lengthen the bottom leg or the left leg. If you can't lengthen your left leg, hold here and just focus on the hamstring stretch, okay? But if you can be here with an upside down L, go for it. And hopefully you found your spot already and you've been holding this. I'm just going through several variations for those who need the different variations. All right, holding here, we get a stretch through the calf and the thigh. For, for let's hear five more breaths, okay? Keep going, deep breath in and out. Again, breathe in. Exhale, let it out. We have two more. So now, I recommend bending the other leg first. Bring your foot flat to the floor. Now let's take this leg down without the blanket or strap. Second side, 
So start to extend your left foot towards the ceiling. Again, the leg doesn't need to be straight, but do find some leverage in there. If you can lengthen the right leg, lengthen your right leg. Notice you get a nice stretch through the psoas muscle here. So through the front of the hip. That's the purpose of having a blanket underneath us is so that we can open up the muscle through the front of the hip. However, again, if you're unable to lengthen out and have a blanket underneath you, keep maybe your foot flat or don't use a blanket at all. If you have the higher lift and it feels good on this side, keep the higher lift, keep the folded blanket underneath you. Sometimes we need a different variation for the second side. So if you need to adjust the blanket or the legs or even your, your towel or strap for the second side, or maybe you have more bend in this knee than you did on the other side, that's okay, okay? Don't expect both sides to be perfectly the same. We ourselves are perfectly imperfect. So honor your imperfections because that's what makes you you. Yes, it makes you you. All right, hopefully you've gotten into your variation by now. And let's find five long, deep breaths. Keep going, deep in the breath. Two more, deep breaths. Beautiful. Now instigate your movement with the lower leg first. So bend your knee of the lower leg. Then as you start to take the strap off the upper leg, let your left leg come down. Nice. Maybe some gentle little windshield wipers here. Let your legs go side to side. Now let's find a few breaths. If you still have the blanket underneath you, you can do any height, the thick height or the lower height. Go ahead and lengthen out. Even if you don't have a blanket underneath you, go ahead and lengthen out, even the arms to the back. So you're getting a nice big stretch, lengthening through the whole front line of your body. Just open up here and breathe. Let's go for five deep breaths. If at any time this is painful, keep your knees bent, okay? Three more breaths. Nice, beautiful. All right, bring both knees to bend. Then ground down into your feet to pull the blanket out from underneath. So take your blanket out. Feel your tailbone come back to the mat. All right, now from here, I want you to widen your feet. Keep your knees bent, but bring your feet all the way out to the edges of your mat. Or if you're not using a mat today, at least make sure your feet are more than hip width apart. Now with both legs wide, you're gonna lower both your knees to the left. So lower both legs to the left and it creates kind of this zigzag or also known as a windmill. So as both legs lower to the left, you have this windmill shape. Open up your arms up top. Now what's going on here is we're getting an inner rotation of the right thigh. So your right thigh bone is rotating inward. Remember, I discussed that we need to find the full range of motion of our hips. So this is helping us find the adduction, the inner rotation of your thigh bone in the hip socket. This pose could also get into your IT band, so you might feel it all the way through the outer thigh, hip, and even your lower back. So down here on the lower right side of your back, and there's always a lot of tension in there whenever people have sciatica. We carry a lot of tension down here in the lower back. 
So breathe into this. It can be a little bit intense, especially if you're tight. So find some nice, deep breaths here. Let's go for five more, okay? Breathe in. Exhale, let it out. Again, breathe in. Exhale, let it out. Three more. You can do anything for three breaths. Go for it. We have two more. Beautiful. You made it. Maybe use your hands to help bring your legs up to center. Bring your legs up. Pause for a moment in the center. You can actually let your knees fall into each other so you're not kneed for a moment here. Feel your lower back and your spine neutralize as you hold and breathe for a couple breaths. If you have a lot of pain or sensation coming out of that pose, maybe pause the video and take your time here. Breathe before you do the second side. So if you need to pause the video, pause the video. Otherwise, I'm ready for the second side. Are you? Okay, let's do second side. So again, both feet are wider than my hips, and then I gently let both legs lay towards the right side. And I have this windmill effect with my legs again. Arms can open up and breathe. This side, of course, could be different. So tune into where you feel this. Again, you might feel it through the outer thigh, the outer hip, lower back. Even the glutes and your piriformis might feel this again. So if you feel this on your sits bone again, we're working into the right spot. We found your sweet spot. Yay, right? And again, if you are suffering from just tight muscles, like the tight piriformis, psoas muscle, and all the other hip flexors, then maybe we'll get relief from that sciatica. Or maybe you don't have sciatica at all, and it's just tight muscles. Again, that's good news to find out that maybe you don't really have sciatica. So possibly even set a mantra or or your intention to, I don't have sciatica, I have tight muscles, and Renee is helping me open up these tight muscles. All right, five more breaths. You can do this, breathe. Three more, nice and deep. Deeper than you have in this entire video. Go as deep as you can with those breaths. Two more. One more. Beautiful, you've made it. Gently bring your legs back up. Maybe use your hands to manipulate your legs. Hold in the center. You can do the knock knee variation, let your knees fall into each other. Let some of that sensation subside. Sometimes coming out of the posture, we have a lot of uh, tingling in the body or sensation. Let it subside. Nice. Now today, if you have time for a mini Shavasana, let's reincorporate the blanket again. For a Shavasana, my favorite place to put the blanket is going to be behind either your thighs or your knees. So putting a little bit of a prop underneath the thighs or the knees. And then open up your arms and enjoy your Shavasana. If you don't have time for Shavasana today, maybe next time carve out just a little bit more time for it. Stay lying down. I'm going to come up to seated just so I can say goodbye to you. But stay lying down. Lay here. Count to 20 breaths if you can. So if you can get through 20 breaths before you sit up, I encourage that. But for now, I just wanted to come up and to seated. Say thank you for 
um, being here today. And if you enjoyed my video, subscribe to my channel so that you can always get the latest. Also, leave some comments below. Leaving comments below helps other people know whether this video was worth watching or not. So please leave some comments below. And with peace, love, and abundance, I leave you with namaste.